Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Joe Sarvati, who is affectionately known as Coach. And it's Groundhog Day, Coach. Coming off a strong night for us. We crushed it on DraftKings. Both of our hybrid lineups on FanDuel cashed. So in honor of Groundhog Day, are you ready to do it again tonight? You know what? There was a lot of pressure yesterday because of the Groundhog Day coming today. And we definitely wanted to utilize that joke. We had it in the can <laughs> and ready. <laughs> so we had to win. But uh, we did. And actually, you know, I mean, we, it was terrific. Your lineups were great. We put s- some good stuff together. But actually, the DFS gods were in our favor because we benefited from that late game cancellation because uh, we didn't have a lot of exposure as, you know, a lot of folks did to uh, the Joker and different guys like that. So, hey, you know, uh, things happen in DFS all the time, but it sure is nice to be on the good side of it. You know, I'll take that every time. It is. And it worked out because we did have Will Barton in both of our cash lineups, but he was 85 to 90 percent owned. Yeah. So that was easy to overcome. Like we and- said, free square. And there's a perfect example. We I talk about it all the time. When you have those free squares, you have to take them because you don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> and if he smashes, you have it with everybody else. If something bizarre happens like that, you don't lose anything because everybody had him. So great lesson for us to learn, and we'll take that all the way to the bank. Yeah, and then Malik Monk, he helped Holy us take some goodness. good good money to the bank. He got almost a 15x return on DraftKings. He was on our DraftKings coaches clipboard and helped a lot of us make some, some good money there. So uh, Yeah, I think if you can't pick up the – the selections and get above 15 X Andrew. I I'm going to be disappointed. I mean, I expect at least a 16 X guy today. All right. Well, we'll keep our eye out for him. <laughs> Great and, and call on Monk, by the way. I mean, <laughs> I don't think there was, I didn't, I don't know any touts in the industry that, that were all over Monk yesterday, like you were. So uh feather in the cap, you know, what, you got to expect that from these 81 grand winners. Okay, I mean, right. you know, they're sharks. That's, that's <laughs> what we do. We grind it every day, so thank you all for tuning in again here as we get going on the six-game NBA slate on Tuesday. We'll go in order of tip-off, as we always do, get you ready for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. And out of these uh, six games and 12 teams, six of them are involved in a back-to-back. And we don't have any 230 totals, Coach, but we do have two over 240. So some monster, uh, monster games to talk about. As we go through the night, we also have six of the top 10 offenses in the league in terms of offensive efficiency. So should be some fun scoring tonight. A lot of uh, exciting DFS action. So let's start with game one. It's Toronto and Orlando, the only game tipping off at 7 o'clock Eastern. And this is a rematch from Sunday. Um, They played on Toronto's court and Toronto won 115-102. The total here is a similar amount. Again, 215 on betus.com.pa. Our presenting yeah. sponsor, Toronto, the six-point favorite here. They've got Norman Powell questionable and OG Ananobi out. Right. And then on the Orlando side, Aaron Gordon's out. So we may have some value opportunities with the forwards from Orlando. How are you looking at game number one tonight? Well, I mean, first of all, this is going to be an interesting slate. That's why DFS is so much fun because every day is so different. But <clears throat> you you stated it exactly right at the front. We have two games over 240. So let's face it. Let's just put it right out there right now. With six games on the slate, those two games are going to have like 80% of the ownership on this card. So what we need to do is just try to find a guy or two from some of these other games that, you know, will fill in that 20 or 25% to make the difference. Because I think, you know, we're all going to be piling on those two games specifically. There's no question about it. So it does shift uh, your strategy a little bit. So a couple of things. Uh, did you happen to see Aaron Gordon's ankle when he was yeah. on crutch? Oh, gosh, that looked bad. So they're saying, what, like a month possibly for that. Uh, hopefully it's not fractured. But he'll be out for a while. And uh, it does open up uh, some some value here uh, for sure. I mean, we, we, we have a tendency to want to jump right to Birch as soon as Gordon's out. And... You know, rightfully so. Birch does a nice job. He's 
He's uh, active when he's out there. His DFS points per minute are really good for a bench player. You know, but is he going to get all of that run? Um, that's the question. Um, certainly a good price and certainly an option uh, for the injured player. And, you know, his uh, salary has really not completely adjusted yet. Um, in this game, from a defensive efficient standpoint, Toronto is 11th and Orlando is 18th. From pace, uh, we have Toronto up to 10th um, and Orlando only at 22 and, you know, I, this is a weird take here, but keep an eye on this this next week, Andrew. Orlando's 22nd in pace, but half the game they had Aaron Gordon playing point, which they truthfully did. He was playing point forward. That slowed them down. He's, his handle was okay, but it was a little slow. He'd walk it up once he got to half court, you know, to start the offense. I think you're going to see that increase. Whether it's you know uh, Anthony or even Jordan Bone off the bench, whoever they're playing at points going to have a little bit of shift up. So put a little mark next to uh, Orlando and their games coming up because I think you're going to see that 22 move up in pace, which makes their games much more palatable for sure. Um, I want to touch on since we have only six games today, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but. We had a lot of requests uh, to discuss defensive real plus minus. And what I did prior to this uh, podcast is I pulled the top 10 percent and uh, top and bottom 10 percent per team in uh, defensive real plus minus. So the top 10 percent guys for Toronto are Baines, Boucher and Stanley Johnson. And that comes into play because, you know, Baines and Boucher are splitting minutes one of them is always on the floor. Stanley Johnson is bad of a DFS play. He is. Don't play him, in my opinion. I just I know he gets some minutes, but he's a defensive specialist, as you can see by the numbers. So, but that, that comes into play. I mean, that's you know, Toronto's defense is getting better. From the Orlando side, the only two are Birch, who's gonna see more run with Gordon out, and Bacon, who gets just very spare time. On the Bad side of this, uh, Toronto just Thomas off the bench, three-point shooting specialist. And here's a guy for Orlando that we want to attack uh, is Fournier. He's consistently one of the worst uh, defensive shooting guards. So for me, again, you know, with the focus being literally 75% on the two games with those monster numbers and all those DFS points available, you know, I'm, I'm looking at trying to grab a little value here. Uh, with Birch, possibly. I think that uh, Vukovic is a fine play if you want to utilize him. I mean, he's always going to get his number and his price has actually come down a little bit. So that's not too bad. Uh, really, like, stunned at the whole Boucher thing. First of all, his price has come down like 2500 bucks, but that's because he's not playing much. So whatever's going on there with Nurse, why he doesn't want to play him that much is... Uh, is, you know, beyond me, it's certainly no favor to us DFS guys that love to, you know, roster that guy. But, you know, and then I just can't quite pull the trigger on Baines on the other side because I know he's getting minutes and he's getting some stats. But I just, you know, is uh, there's going to be stretches where he does run Boucher longer or something. So not real comfortable with those pieces. I do want to see the Norman Powell news because. He does take a decent amount of shots, and he's if he's out, you got to look at Davis as a possible uh, ne next guy up kind of uh, play if you want to go value. And if Powell's out, it does uh, raise by 4 and 5%, which is a ton of usage uh, for Van Vliet and Lowry, uh, respectively. So you do have some options there. We need the rest of that news. Uh, probably going to try to grab one value guy out of this game and move forward. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the themes today will be value because there's a, a handful of uh, opportunities in the 3 and 4K range on both sites with some of the wings and some of the bigs. Yeah. And this is a, a game that's right in that mix. Baines, for me, is a guy that I will play tonight especially on DraftKings, where you can play two centers. He's 4,300, and he got 29 minutes 
in this matchup. And I think that's part of the reason Boucher uh, didn't get as many minutes. They just decided to play Baines against Vucevic. He did a very yeah. good job against him. So he I don't did. see any reason why he won't get at least 26 minutes again. And he grabbed all the rebounds. He had 16 of them. Yeah. And we've been talking about him here on recent shows that he's been finally getting some minutes and some production because he was bad at the beginning of the season. So I think we take advantage of it because it's the same matchup uh, on DraftKings, especially. The I did notice that the other Toronto key guys here are pretty cheap on DraftKings. They're all in the 7K range for Lowry, Van Vliet, and, and Pascal. Uh, the Pascal, it's uh, Siakam. I mean, you just don't usually see that. Those guys yeah. are more like $8,000 players. It's not a great game environment here, of course, on this slate. But I think you could look at one of those guys for a GPP, especially if Powell is out, like you said. Or yeah. Davis. Davis is one of those value plays to consider. But uh, Pat, uh, Baines is the guy I like the most for Toronto. And on the Orlando side, a pretty good chance I won't go with anyone here. Toronto's defense gotten a lot better here recently. Uh, I think there's a decent chance Clark Starks here instead of Gordon. And so we will get that rotation between Clark, Vucevic, and Birch. Uh, you're probably going to have two value starters for Orlando with Ennis and Clark. I would be more likely to play Clark, but uh, I, I do like some of the other value plays here better. So I probably won't go there. Did you notice there's a, a pretty big shift in pricing the last couple of days? I think whatever the algorithm that, that both DraftKings and FanDuel use has really shifted, especially DraftKings. There's guys that moved a couple thousand dollars both ways. Very interesting. So play, pay very close attention to that pricing. And remember, if you play multiple sites, you know, I play DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo every night, you got to look at them as their own complete separate entities. If you start wanting to jam a guy in and just play him in all three, you got to know that, that that is not a good strategy whatsoever. You've got to look at these by pricing per, uh, you know, each individual site. And that's nothing new to the pros and all the, the guys that listen and play every day. But if you're a little bit newer to it, uh, that's a, an easy mistake that we all fall into because we want to root for that guy across the board. But, you know, check the prices, especially this week. There's a lot of shifting going on. Great point. Totally agree. I mean, with the difference in prices and, of course, the difference in the scoring r rules and formats, right? You get you get different winning lineups on both sites, so you have yeah. to pay close attention. All right, game two, coach. It's our first two forty special. It's two forty two and a half yeah. on BetUS. Clippers one and a half point favorites here in a clash between a bunch of stars with the Clippers and Nets here. This is going to be a lot of fun, and. The Clippers are on the front end of a back-to-back. -back. They're going to play in Cleveland tomorrow, so they're probably not too worried about that. Should be able to handle uh, the Cavaliers and uh, go for two in a row. In terms of the injury news, Pat Beverly is still out. Batum is questionable. Over on the net side, looks like we're going to have all three studs in yeah. the lineup. So here's the first big takeaway for me on this slate. In this game of stars... I think we fade all of the Brooklyn stars and it's obviously a, here's the, here's the headline for the nets. It's not Kyrie Harden or Durant. It's Landry Shamit revenge night. And <laughs> <laughs> here's a value play for you off the bench that I, that I really want to keep thinking about tonight. It's Perry. And the reason I'm looking at Perry is because the Clippers obviously <laughs> have, <laughs> Sorry, I dropped my head there yeah. for a second. I, I thought I was having the big one, but I'm okay now. Okay, good. Yeah, so <laughs> here's here's the the dig deep guy. I don't we're not looking at a monk 15x, but uh I want to mention him for a GPP play because we know that the Clippers have Ibaka and Zubots basically splitting minutes. And I'm looking at Brooklyn and thinking who's gonna guard Zubots off the bench? Because we know Jeff Green has been playing a ton of minutes. He's playing and great. basically yeah, he's been playing great, basically playing five and stealing a lot of minutes from DeAndre Jordan. But I just don't see Jeff Green defending Zubats in the paint. He's probably able to do it, but I think Perry gets some extra run here. And in case you missed it, two games ago against Oklahoma City, he had a double-double in 19 minutes Crazy. off the bench. So 
I think he gets a chance to defend Zubats and and uh, extremely low owned, but a guy you could get in, uh, especially on FanDuel as a power forward for only thirty six hundred. Shamit, I kind of joke about with the revenge narrative going against the Clippers. I, I don't think I'll go there because all the guys are back. And then we've got Bruce Brown going back to the bench likely. So, you know, he's the guy that's probably most likely to do some damage on the wing off the bench. But um, I just don't think I'm going to go to any of these studs for the Nets. Kyrie Irving, again, is the cheapest. Again, on DraftKings at 8,800 is probably the only one I would consider. Um, over on the Clippers side, I like the spot here for Reggie Jackson. Good price still, low 5K, uh, getting to start again for Beverly. We're not scared about Kyrie Irving's defense or really anybody on the Nets. They're, they're 20th in defensive yeah. efficiency. That's been their big problem. Of course, we had that game against the Wizards where there was almost 300 points scored in regulation. So the Clippers have to be uh, licking their chops a little bit to get this matchup. I will consider one of the studs for the Clippers. Uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard, I think, is a fair price. Paul George is pretty cheap on FanDuel at 8,400. Uh, I'm not going to go to the bench guys for the Clippers. Um, you know, they're just uh, the with the price and the minutes that I'm expecting. Not really interested there. Zubots would be a, a real deep GPP play because I like the value centers better than him on both sides. So, you know, some interest in the stars for the Clippers, but not really for me on the net side. Do you look at this game differently? It, it's a really, really intriguing game. There's no question about it. But I, I love the fact, though, in DFS, we've got a game that has Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard all on the same floor. And we spend the time talking about Reggie Perry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's DFS. It's there all it about is. value, man. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But a uh, couple of things. First of all, for the listeners, if you're getting any uh, hiccups with this recording, I apologize. Andrew, on your side, it's like cutting out just a smidgen here and there. It's probably because I think you guys had a big snowstorm, right? We did. We got a foot last night. Ooh, so good night. Yeah. Wow. Well, hopefully. Uh, we don't lose uh, contact, but we'll we'll just keep on chugging. All right, this game, really, really interesting game. First of all, uh, you know, let's go over the, the statistics a little bit. We talked about the fact that Clippers are middle of the road defensively. Brooklyn doesn't defend at all. In fact, there's a stat. This is a stat. Look it up. It is the case. Since the James Harden trade, I understand small sample size, so don't yell at the screen. But regardless of the small sample size, Brooklyn has – been by far number one offensively. In fact, if they stay at the pace that they've played since Harden's come there, it'll be the best offensive efficient team in the history of the NBA. But guess what? The exact same thing goes for the other side. They're 30th since Harden's come there. And again, epic proportions. If they continue at that defensive pace, worst in the history of the NBA. So the Brooklyn games until further notice are going to have to be like half your team every night. Cause there's just too many. I mean, you look at the optimal lineups all over the place since Harden's gone there and you see Brooklyn game people all over the place because there's just that much more available. So keep that into consideration. It certainly comes into play here. Pace wise, the Clippers we know are not super fast 28th, actually not fast at all. And Brooklyn's fourth. So it's a pace up game for the Clippers. Big pace down game for Brooklyn if anybody can slow them down. Uh, a couple things on, on uh, defensive real plus minus I thought were very interesting. Guess how many Brooklyn players are in the top 10%? Zero. 15%. Zero. 20%. Zero. There you go, man. It's not pretty. <laughs> they do need to pick some people up defensively. I heard they may even go after... Uh, the old Nick guy that won a uh, championship with LeBron somewhere. Who's the old tall Nick guy that plays great D tats, uh, like a real long, small forward two guard. It's going to drive me nuts. I'll think of it. You know who I'm talking about though? I don't know. <sighs> played for the Knicks for a long time. Great defender. Anyway, we'll hopefully. He's on the Knicks now. Or he's not no, he was on the Knicks for a long time. He's out of basketball right now. 
but he he won a championship with LeBron somewhere, maybe in Cleveland. But anyway, I know everybody, uh, t- you know, send us a message on YouTube. Help. We we need to phone a friend. <laughs> Hello. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, and then as far as as far as the Clippers go, they have Pat Bev, who's out. Leonard, Ibaka, and Batum, if Batum's questionable. But there's a lot of guys with a lot of minutes with good D. So that gives you some hope. Uh, as far as the bottom of the barrel from Brooklyn, it's Kyrie Irving, who is the fifth worst defensive guard in basketball right now. And uh, you're not going to believe this one. Would you believe Brown is in the low top bottom 10%? And we thought, you know, his reputation, Bruce Brown, is a defender. He's not defending well, or else they're attacking him or something's going on. But he is way down there. And uh, uh, nobody, there was uh, just more senior for the Clippers. That's the only one. That's what, you know, we can expect him possibly off the bench again, even if Batum doesn't play. That's what they did last time. All right. As far as this game goes, the guy I like on the Clippers right now is Paul George. I think the the only defender that I respect for Brooklyn is Kevin Durant. I don't care what anybody says. That guy can defend. He's a shot blocker. I think he's on Kawhi. So I think that opens Paul George up for sure. Uh, you know, the guy I like the most, though, is Reggie Jackson. I just, you know, mentioned the Kyrie Irving stats. Jackson hasn't been adjusted price-wise to Pat Bev being out. Jackson is really playing hard and really taking a lot of shots. So Jackson is a must for me. I do like Paul George. And then on the Brooklyn side, I'm, you know, when all three of them play, you're, it's, you're taking a risk. And I don't see the three big dudes jumping out. I like the ancillary guys again. You know, I want to talk about more of the Joe Harris's and, and Jeff Green's and DeAndre Jordan's. I think even though Jordan's only playing half the game, I use the, the exact thinking that you're uh, doing is when they bring Zubats in, somebody big's got to take them. I personally think it'll be more Jordan uh, than Jeff Green, but we'll see. So, you know, it never hurts to get value guys from these games because they get drug into DFS points sometimes with the rest of the gang. All right. I know we're going a little too slow today, so let's I'll pick up the pace here and let's uh, let's keep on trucking. All right. Game three is our first 8 o'clock tip on the East Coast, Memphis and Indiana. Memphis coming off a nice win over the Spurs last night, 133-102. And Indiana's on the front end of a back-to-back. They're going to head to Milwaukee tomorrow. The Pacers are five-point favorites, and the over-under here, 223. Injury news for Memphis. Joe Val is still out. Grayson Allen is out. And everybody ready to go for Indiana, who's been playing recently. So uh, any interest in this lower total game? Uh, I mean, again, it's going to be just one off here and there. Um, You know, Memphis is all the way up to second best defensive team in the league. So that gets my attention. Indiana's 14th pace, their 11th and 16th, which isn't bad at all. Uh, You know, makes you want to look at it a bit. But there are a lot of great defenders on these teams that are stepping up this year. Memphis has uh, top 10% Tillman, the rookie Bain, Clark, and Anderson. Slow mo is always tough defensively. So they have four good defenders. And Indiana has Turner and his backup, Sampson, who doesn't get in much. Uh, so great, some great individual defenders on both teams. The only negative uh, guy is, is, believe it or not, McConnell from the, the uh, Pacers, who's supposed to be Scrappy defensively, but I think they're taking advantage of him a little bit today. Um, you know, John Moran uh, coming off, it's a uh, back-to-back for them. So, you know, Brogdon's defense is tough as hell. I think that it makes it tough. I like Brogdon. His price is a little bit over-baked, uh, I believe. Uh, the guy that I sort of like here, believe it or not, again, I'm all of a sudden on his bandwagon, is Miles Turner. I think the potential is there with Memphis rotating between Clark and Tillman and some and Jang and just, you know, moving some bigs around there. Uh, I sort of like his potential here on the floor if this game stays close uh, with his uh, blocks and everything. He can get there pretty quick. Um, you know, and on the Memphis side, there's certainly some good value guys. Even a guy like Anderson, Clark's not too poorly priced. I mean, you can find some value in this game if you need it. 
to supplement those two big games. So what do you think? Yeah, maybe a one here at most. You know, not excited about the the back to back situation for Memphis, and we basically saw split minutes for them last night. So we got to keep that in mind going forward when they're involved in a back to back. So I'm not on yeah. on John Morant because of that. Um, you know, the bigs were already splitting minutes and both playing well. Timlin and Jang were impressive. Yeah, but uh, I don't think you need to go there. You could go with one of those backup guards for Memphis, and you know, anticipating that they're going to get about half the game. Tyus like a Jones, Anthony Melton kind of guy. Melton. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would be the most likely one off for me for Memphis on the end in it, in the Andy side, I kind of like your boy Sabonis here because he's been priced down just a smidgen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think, you know, Clark is quick, but I don't think he has the size to defend Sabonis. So I think he could eat in the paint tonight. 8,700 on DraftKings looks pretty good to me as does 9,100 on FanDuel. Um, cause you can, there's a few power forwards you can pay down for on, uh, FanDuel. So he balances that out pretty well. What one thing, not to interrupt, but it's a good point here. And I want us to remember too, I've noticed like when they have Tillman or, or Jang in there, especially that a lot of times Clark will move over and play the, the center. Like he might may guard Turner and then they'll use one of those guys cause they're a little bit stronger and better defensively to guard the better power forward like a Sabonis. So something to keep an eye on and be aware of. That's a good point. And it might work against Indiana because Turner will spend time out on the three-point line. Right. So uh, good point there. I don't think I want to go to Turner, though, because I like these value centers better on the slate. And there is uh, a guy around that price tag on DraftKings. It's, his name is Rudy Gobert. Who Never heard I, of him. Yeah. <laughs> That's who I would pay up for in that price range for centers if I was going to go that route on DraftKings tonight. They're not playing the Dallas Mavericks, sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not a 2020 game? Yeah, 30-30 could have probably been. But uh, Did you see right. my post? I'm not, I hate to go off base here, but I got to yeah. say something. That the tweet about Rick Carlisle, I'm yeah. so furious. Everybody was like, sorry, coach, sorry, coach, terrible loss. Uh, let me just say this, and I'm only going to take 10 seconds to do this. Carlisle's got to get his head out of his ass because he is not coaching. He's making bad decisions. Last night was a perfect example. They have a foul to give, no less, and they let Booker get squared up to shoot a three. This has happened repetitively over this, this stretch. Bad decisions, bad subs, bad. I just, all right, I won't. I just had to say a little something. I feel better. Thanks. That's the uh, little Mavericks contingent there. You exactly. see Dirk behind hey, Coach. Hey, Dirk, yeah, he was whispering it in my ear the whole time. I was forced there to say go. it. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the second half of the slate, and we've got the other 240 game, Portland and the Wizards. Oh, this is, a, this is a pass game, right? Yeah, right, definitely. <laughs> Especially with the, the close line here, Wizards favored by two. The only thing you don't like is that Portland's coming in on a back-to-back. -back. They got destroyed at Milwaukee, 134-106. to 106. The Wizards on the front end of a back-to-back. -back. They're going to play Miami tomorrow. But, uh, you know, Portland's going to dig deep here and find some energy because the Wizards are 28th in defense. And on the flip side, Portland is 29th in defense. And obviously, we have the tremendous pace from the Wizards. They're number one. Solid pace from Portland. They're 13th. So it's it's giddy up time here with the this game. Storm. It is. Um, I'm more interested in the Wizards guys here. I like Westbrook and Beal. They showed in that game against Brooklyn that they can both smash value together. And man, what a finish those two guys had. Really important moment for the Wizards and those two guys playing together. I think to have Beal drain that long three, then they come up with a steal, they get it to Westbrook, he hits the game winner. He was fired up to do that against his old buddy Durant. He was really ticked off in that game, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's what's new? That's Westbrook. I mean, yeah, he's in the uh, most intense player in history. I think. I love his intensity more than anything because I don't like a lot of his decisions, his turnovers, his bad shots. But you cannot fault his motor, his intensity. No. So uh, it's it's fun to have him when he's healthy and and taking advantage of that, and he picks up some steals. And uh, man, was he aggressive going to the rims? He was. Pissed. I like Westbrook. He was. I like Westbrook and Beal here. We know that Portland is bad defensively, 
And, you know, this is a good game for me to start off on because with the defensive real plus minus, we're not going to have a lot of guys to talk about who are strong defensively in this game. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> they do each so, have one guy. It's better than zero. <laughs> it's better than zero. So I, I like both of those studs. I think you can play them together. You could even get uh, Ish Smith into the mix if you want to uh, maybe go Beal and Smith. Um, you know, he's taking advantage of his opportunity here. Uh, I'm not looking to play any of the forwards or bigs for the Wizards. Too much of a rotation for me. So I, I'm going to focus on those guards. On the Portland side, despite it being a great matchup, I'm not as excited about those guys. I think Lillard is a little bit too expensive for me. We, you know, with Russell, Russell Westbrook defense, uh, Trent's a little bit pricey on this slate. Nasir Little is somebody I think you can consider. He is uh, the value play here to look at. If Derek Jones Jr. is out again, I think he will be. He sounds doubtful. We don't have an official designation today that I've seen, but assuming he's out and, and Little starts again, I mean, he just scored 30 actual points last night. He's only 3,100 on DraftKings, 35 on FanDuel. So he's in consideration for me. And that's probably it. Uh, Simons is a valued guard off the bench, potentially. But I'm really going to load up here with a lot of my salary from the Wizards. Yeah, I mean, this is very simple. I mean, I, I'll go out on a limb and just say that you'll see almost every optimal lineup that takes stuff down tonight is going to have a minimum of four to five guys from this game. I mean, I, I just don't think it's, you know, it's unavoidable. This is the best, possibly the best DFS matchup thus far in this moment of this year, as far as the potential for this game to just, you know, go through the roof and you can't see it backing up and all of a sudden being a low scoring game that just the potential for that just doesn't exist in this game. In my opinion, um, you know, you've, you read all the stats. It's very simple. I mean, these two teams score like crazy and they don't defend. I mean, it, there's no, uh, you know, no mystery to it. As far as the DRPM, we know Covington's a good defender and he's, even though he's been horrific offensively, not only is he a great defensive player, uh, I think he's very playable tonight. I think his salary is still good. He's got to be on the floor 30-some minutes, mid-30s, just for his defensive purposes. And he's going to whack a few threes and get some rebounds and steals and stuff. So I like him. <clears throat> the only guy uh, on the Washington side that is in the top 10% is, um, is Mo Wagner, who – I think you'll see get decent minutes. He really woke up the last game and played. He had some wicked dunks. I mean, I guess he was a little ticked that his minutes went way down with Alex Len coming to the team. So he had a little uh, point to prove, and, and you could tell he was playing. So hopefully he gets some minutes. I'm not going to go there, though. I think I think there's lots of trap plays here. And not, I'm not, you know, saying to not play these guys. And I never want to come across, by the way, on this show, like, cocky know-it-all don't play this guy he sucks I, I don't like tats that feel like you know they people watching are like what this guy doesn't think he can make a mistake we all make mistakes for sure but I'm giving you my heartfelt opinion and you know humbly giving that because I'm you know make mistakes as well but I just I don't see I think people are going to go to these three particular guys and I personally think it's a mistake Mo Wagner being one coming off that monster game. I explained why that was. And two is Nazir Little and three is, is Anthony Simons. Nazir Little and Anthony Simons played 14 minutes straight in that game. There was a 35 point blowout a bunch of around a bunch of G league guys that would not be in the league if it wasn't for the COVID extra players thing. And they just puffed their stats through the roof. So for me, I, those plays, you know, just reek of the guy may not get in or play, you know, eight or 12 minutes and get, you know, six, seven fantasy points. So I'm not going to go there. I'll tell you right now, though, I am starting. Oh, let me give you the bad RPMs and then I'll tell you my two locks of the day. Simons and Lillard, horrible defenders for Portland in the bottom 6%. So that really helps the guards from Washington even more. And then how about this group? <sighs> Westbrook. Beal, Len, and Jerome Robinson, all in the bottom 8% defensively. So, yikes. Um, I'm starting every lineup, 100% ownership. 
with Bradley Beal and Damon, Damian Lillard, and I'm going to make it work. Those two guys are my base players. I don't think you can get away from them today, uh, in my humble opinion, and I think they're both 60-plus DFS points. That's, that's my starting point. You still can grab value for those guys that are going to get drug along here. There's a lot of good possibilities here with Covington, with a guy like like you mentioned, Ish Smith, who's playing big minutes as a backup point with uh, Neto being out. You've got guys like Trent, who's been shooting the ball well. Covington, I mentioned. Uh, you know, you got you can't look past the fact that this Garrison Matthews kid is getting 20-some minutes per game. He's the one that came up with the big steal that pulled that game out and threw it to Westbrook for that final three. And he hits threes and he plays hard. He's a super value guy, made more GPP-ish, but don't forget about him. And then, you know, don't be afraid to throw in one of the, the guys, again, that are going to get drug along in this game and find themselves, you know, with 30, 35 fantasy points where they're only averaging 17 or 18. So, again, four or five guys from this game. For me, I start every lineup with uh, Beal and Lillard. And you like Lillard better than Russell Westbrook? I do. I, I, I want to have, well, I, I love correlation. I, I don't like all my eggs in one basket, and I can't afford Lillard, Westbrook, and Beal. So I like the correlation better. Uh, you know, with Westbrook, or I'm, yeah, with Westbrook and Beal being such poor defenders, I definitely want to go the Lillard side. And with Lillard being such a poor defender and Simons, I want to have exposure to the guard on both sides. So, I don't blame you for wanting Westbrook in there. Uh, I've got to think there's just a tick. I mean, I'm talking five-point regression of just the intensity he went after that last game. You know, he he mentioned after that game, by the way, that he read in the press that he was done. He, you know, they should blow the team up. All stuff we were saying, everybody was saying. It. You know, he's he's not he doesn't fit there, and you know. I understand that he'll feed off of that all season, but it was fresh that last game and he got to go against Durant. So, you know, all three of them were in strong consideration for me, but he ended up being the odd man out for that reason. Gotcha. Yeah. It's unfortunate. We can't likely have all three just too yeah. expensive. Yeah. All right. Salary, salary prohibit prohibitive. <laughs> That's right. All right. Two games to go. We've got the 10 o'clock games, Detroit and Utah, assuming these team two teams play, we had a Yikes. false positive in the Detroit organization. So that's good news. And hopefully everybody's healthy. We can play some hoops tonight in Utah uh, where it all stopped last year. We've got a 219 total. Uh, Utah, the 12 and a half point favorites. And in terms of the injury news, uh, looks to me like this is a clean game. So it's just a matter of if we tip it off. So uh, take this one away for us. Well, they did come out in the press and say this game was going to play for what you you know just said. It was the other team was a false positive. So don't don't panic. You know, I know a lot of people got burned last night. First of all, you've got two 10 o'clock games. So, you know, prepare accordingly. You can always shift. Last night was just an outlier strange night where there was just one late game and it was a super, super late cancel. So don't don't uh, panic that way. For me, though, it's very simple. You've got the 21 and 5th best defense utah's fifth 23rd and 25th pace not good a lot of good defenders Plumley right now is in top 10 percent. and then how about all three of these starters for utah you wonder why they're winning they have the top seven percent defensive in the whole league is gobert conley and o'neill that's pretty stout nobody else can say that in the league and there's on bad defenders for the two teams only dumbuyu off the bench for Detroit. Everybody else is decent. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this game. There's two guys that I'm looking at, and I'm going to roster one of them. I just have to determine which one. Uh, I'm leaning towards Jeremy Grant. He was one of the algorithm guys that DraftKings and FanDuel just absolutely plummet lowered. He's down like between 15 and 2,100, and he's still the man there. I mean, he's getting all the usage, assisting, rebounding, scoring, He's very, very much in play for me in this game. I don't care if it's against Utah or not. And then uh, as a flyer, because I've been paying down for center a lot lately and it's worked, I'm going to consider Plumlee again 
just because he's so cheap and they're going to need his body in there against Gobert. And the big problem with Plumlee is he's been getting in foul trouble, but he's been going against centers that take the ball to the hoop, that pull him away and are athletic like the BAM kind of guys. Gobert's not like that. I don't think he'll get in foul trouble there because he's just going to lay a body on him. He's either going to get the rebound or not, and he's not going to have to fly and be out of position, and that's when he gets in foul trouble. So I think he gets a small uptick in minutes, and those are the only two guys I'm looking for uh, from this game. Utah's healthy. They're all splitting minutes. They slow the ball down. They're defensive. They're you know playing terrific. My man Quinn Snyder, for the second month in a row, got – NBA coach of the month, by the way. So people are starting to notice how good he is. And that's it for me on that game. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty similar. Uh, Grant, you talk about his price. It's as if the algorithm gave him a zero for that. I don't know what happened. That yeah. no game in Denver yeah, because exactly. he's 7,000 on DraftKings, 6,800 on FanDuel. Crazy. Good prices on both spots. So he's definitely the key guy for me to look at with Detroit. And Plumlee, I think, is fair. You know, it's, it's, tough slate here with centers a lot of good options yeah. given the price tags and go bear on DraftKings 7200 he's 91 on fan so this is the perfect example of what coach was introducing at the top you got to look at the different sites because I'm not going to play him on FanDuel on a slate like this with 10 you know Hall of Fame wing players but maybe on DraftKings I get him at 7200 and uh, that's going to be it for me for for Utah Excellent. Coach, you ready for the last game? I am ready. Okay. It is Boston and Golden State, the other 10 o'clock tip out west, 226 total. Boston favored by two and a half. They are on the front end of a back-to-back. They're going to stay in Northern California tomorrow and go play at Sacramento. Some big news here with the Celtics. Marcus Smart with that calf injury, he's out. Peyton Pritchard is still out, so we could have some value with the Boston guards. And on the Golden State side, Wiseman is out for 7 to 10 days. So potential value with the bigs. And this is a a game of value, I think, to look at in a couple of these spots. And I've been really thinking about the matchups here, and I'm having a hard time figuring it out. I think there's a couple different ways this could go because of those injuries. So let's start with Golden State. They don't really have any bigs now other than Looney. It's Looney, Draymond, and Eric Paschal. And both Draymond and Pascal have probable tags right now. So assuming they play, I think those three guys share all those minutes. I'm not quite sure how they start it. You know, if they start with Looney, as they have been, Draymond at the four, I'm just not sure who Draymond's going to guard. Because if Looney's guarding Tice, then Draymond probably has to guard either Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. I think that's a very tough matchup for him, either one. I'm guessing so, Tatum, by the way, but yeah. I agree with you. It is, it's not a perfect matchup for them at all. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's something to consider because Jalen and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are both reasonable price tags. I, I especially like Jalen Brown on fan or sorry on DraftKings at 7,800. I think it's a good good price for him. Um, but back to those Golden State bigs, I'd like to know who's starting. If Looney is starting again, I do like him on both sites in the low to mid 3K range. Uh, Draymond and Pascal are both fair prices as well. So they're they're two of the uh, value power forwards I think you need to consider on FanDuel. Um, Curry is, here's a little sleeper here from the last game. Steph Curry, the best shooter ever in the NBA. Uh, On a slate like this with all these other stars we've been talking about, Probably going to go a little bit under own, but he's not going to have to deal with Marcus Smart defense. So yeah, he might release. just surprise some folks and, and put up a big number. Yeah. On the Boston side, like I said, I like Jalen Brown's price. Uh, Kemba, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about him because the minutes uh, limit is going to continue with him. According to Coach Stevens, he played 28 minutes against the Lakers, shot very poorly. So I don't plan to go there. But you could look at one of the Boston guards. We'll see if Teague starts. He's a nice price in the 4K range. Carson Edwards would be the deep sleeper off the bench. He didn't play in the last game, but I think with Smart out, I think he'll be in the rotation. He's minimum price on DraftKings at 3000 We've seen that if he gets the minutes, he can pay it off by hitting a bunch of threes. So 
Uh, This is one I'm going to have to follow all day, Coach, see if we get any hint about the starting lineup. And I'll likely have a Looney if he's starting and maybe one other value play from this game. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting game. Um, You know, the the spread is close and 224 and a half is is not a bad over under. I'd like to have some exposure here, but, you know, I'm not going to have a ton of salary left. And so it's going to eliminate some of the guys I really want. I think you made some terrific points defensively to match up wise. I personally think they start Looney and Draymond and bring Pascal off the bench and they all split minutes at center. And Boston will will also go small at times. And I've seen them play, you know, where they they have Grant Williams at center or they'll just play super small and have Tatum almost playing the big. I mean, you know, it's all possible there. The interesting thing I I'm uh, with Marcus Smart out. My question is, is Kemba going to guard Curry? Because if that's the case, then Curry needs to be way high on the list because Kemba is the third worst point guard defensively in the league. I'm talking out of like 80 some guys. So he's not stopping anybody. You give Curry that room. Now, is Stevens going to go that route? I, I don't know, but he may be forced to unless, like you said, a Teague or somebody like that comes in and he's not the best defender in the league either. So I think it's a, it's an interesting scenario there. Um, right now, defensively though, both teams are pretty good. They're 12th and ninth. So I'm not going to have more than like a one off or so in this game either. Uh, and they're 17th Boston in pace. They don't like to run and gun, but it's a big pace up for Boston with gold state being second. So it makes you want to play a Boston guy or two, especially since they're uh, shorthanded. But Stevens is also a coach, as you well know, that really utilizes his bench. He's not afraid to get waters in there. And, I mean, he just he gives everybody shifts, uh, you know, to contribute. So that's not a DFS conducive relationship there. So we need to talk to these guys, these Coach Stevens, and, you know, uh, be a little more DFS friendly to us poor guys out here trying to make a living. Um Best defenders, 10% tops, Smart and Tatum for Boston, Wiggins and Looney for Golden State. I mentioned that once before, but it just amazes me that Wiggins is defending that well. I I can't believe it. Worst, like I said, Walker and and Waters are are two very poor defenders on the Boston side. And Golden State, Poole and Mr. Stephen Curry, who's only two spots ahead of Kemba. So if they're guarding each other, it might be like you and I at the Y. Go ahead and score. <laughs> now you let me score. Right. We'll be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah, if this was a different slate without, like, the, the perfect DFS game ever and the second highest total as well, then this game, you know, I'd be over Curry probably and maybe Pascal and, and different guys that are value here. But I just... You know, Tatum would be one of my first guys in normally in this in a matchup like this, but I'm just not going to have the salary for it. So if I can get a, a value guy from this team, even maybe a Wiggins price has come down a little bit. I'd like to have exposure, but I'm not going to be able to pay up for the big guys. But if you play Curry or Tatum, I think you're making a, a good play. It's just I don't know how you get that salary from those perfect storm 250 point games. Excellent. Well, it's going to be a fun slate. I'm looking forward to continuing to build the lineups here throughout the day. And we'd love to have you join us. If you're interested in in grabbing those lineups uh, from us, a big welcome to Tommy 252 who joined this morning. That's right. Uh, So uh, uh, jump in with us. Two ways to join. Go to our website, dfscoachtalk.com. Pick up the length of membership you'd like. We'll send you an email get you into our Discord. That's where we give out our lineups. We do two cash lineups on FanDuel and then a GPP lineup. Those are full lineups that you can plug and play. And then on DraftKings, we have the coach's clipboard with highlighted core plays and pivots to build out your lineup. And uh, if you're if you're also into sports betting, the other great offer that we still have is available at betus.com.pa. If you can make your first deposit there, use the promo code COACHTALK, all one word. It has to be a 149 deposit. And then let us know that you've done that on Twitter. You can find us at DFS Coach Talk. Again, we'll get you into our Discord tonight for the lineups. 
Coach, any final thoughts here? Just if you're watching this on YouTube, our big ask every show, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit the little alert button up in the corner. That all means a lot to us. And we really, really appreciate that. And uh, it's going to be a fun slate tonight. As you can tell, I'm a little extra fired up today. Had the extra cup of coffee. Got these great games going. I'm ready to crush it. And Groundhog Day, which if we can get it again today like we did yesterday, tomorrow is going to be the same day again. Got that? That's right. Got it. <laughs> I got I got the plan. We're going to try to execute it. All so, right, Bill Murray. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Uh, one other thing, uh, when you hit that alert button and subscribe to the channel, you will be notified because later today we'll have our PGA podcast for the week. And then we'll also have our Super Bowl preview coming up this week. So make sure to tune in to those. In the meantime, good luck tonight with your NBA lineups and come back and join us again tomorrow as to crush it in DFS.